Yeah, probably. Rockstar Corporate is actually one of our biggest listeners. Yeah, is oddly true? enough, oddly enough, weirdly, Rockstar Corporate very into off the air. They got shut down for embez like uh for for stealing three hundred thousand dollars of fraud. Holy Just shit! Just a massive, Amazing. massive amount of wire fraud. Oh, I thought I thought you said Michelle's eating those right now. I was like, what are the odds? Like literally right now? Yeah. <laughs> no. Those are good. Those are good. So one of the resolutions that I decided to make for 2022 is I want to learn to make a new dish I've never made before, like once a month, right? Like something that's not, it's not too big a commitment. It's not anything crazy like a new food every week. But I think once a month, 12 meals a year, something that I've never made before that is also not just like a uh, run of the mill, like I've never made Greek dogs at home before, so I'm gonna like make a Greek chili dog, you know, like something like that. I don't want to do that. I want to yeah, do something. Yeah, I, I like... never made a pizza at home with salami on it before. <laughs> it, well, that, but that's what I'm saying. I don't want it to be like a little thing. I want to try like something new, new. And man's making Peking duck out here. I, how did you know? No. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that'd be sick as I hell, mean, though, right? I mean, sure, why not? You know. Um, but do I, it. I decided I wanted to, um. I wanted to learn to make more Italian dishes as a step because I like, you know, I, I, I won't shut up about how I'm Italian. Right. But I actually, I don't know how to make that many like dishes. So what I figured I would do is I would look up, um, Italian food on Google and just see what popped up. And we got this list of the 25 most popular Italian foods and dishes. So I got 25 things here and there's, I gotta be honest, um, pasta and then is on here once. But then there's like 17 different pasta dishes on here as well, which does make this list kind of suck ass for like searching. Yeah. But I found this one thing and I just want to like run it by y'all because it sounds really good. It's okay. called uh, Bagna Cauda, I believe is how you say it. Yeah, that was uh, the the thing the French shot signed uh, that kind of uh, handed power away from the the royal family, correct? That was the best. And yeah. the divine right of kings. No, no, no. You're oh, thinking you're of Magna right. Carta. The Magna Carta is that uh, is that one good Thor movie. What? Never or mind. the Dark it's World fine. doesn't sound like Magna Carta at all. <laughs> <laughs> what was... does Charlemagne have to do with Thor? <laughs> <laughs> right? Did they put Charlemagne into Thor? That sounds here, like ass. Here goes that, here goes the ass. endless bit. <laughs> I try to hop on the bit and I get shut down. I, but I don't this. get it. <laughs> I hate this. Ragnarok doesn't sound like Bagna Cauda. It sounded like the first oh, half of it. Ragnarok. I forgot that was Thor. Ragnarok. Anyway, I only though, know Thor: The Dark World. Well, let me tell you what. That's this just because Noah talks about it a lot. I, yeah, all the time. <laughs> My favorite Thor movie. <laughs> yeah, he just said it earlier. I'm being gaslit. That's why by I know it. Bad taste. <laughs> he knows it, and that's why I know it because he said it earlier. So this dish is um, it's olive oil anchovies and garlic that sounds good that's all it is it's you take like two cups of olive oil and you cook down a shit ton of garlic and anchovies into it and then you dip bread and veggies into it it's like fondue but it's fishy oh, that sounds fun it sounds but the so thing is fun. you never know because like those are three ingredients that i like and think would be well together but uh sometimes it's not that's not how things work sometimes it's i don't too know much how i talked about things situation well, I don't know if I've ever talked about my hatred for kimchi on here before. You hate kimchi? Oh, that's right. You kimchi hate, sucks ass. That. No, I can't. It's like agree. eight things that I like that they combine and taste bad. It's because anytime someone's like, hey, this is a spicy thing, we put some sugar in there. I'm like, why would you ruin it? Like, all you did was ruin it. I'm sorry, wait. Your take is that if there's sugar in spicy things, it's ruined. It sucks, yeah. Why I would I want to eat sugar? That's an atrocious take. There's sugar in kimchi? Usually. I've never noticed it being There's sugar in like, to, like most like most buffalo sauces. Well, I know. Yeah, that's buffalo like there's sauce. sugar. The in, if it's spicy, there's a pretty decent chance there's something sugary in it. I know it sucks. What? A, wh All right, then. I just don't like sweet things and I don't like when, pe thing, when things are sweet and they make everything sweet. Like, everything is sweet in the planet. <laughs> everything in the whole world is sweet. <laughs> Pretty much like I was I looked up a Peking duck recipe because I was like, what if I, like Noah actually made Peking duck? And then it's like for the sauce, you want to put like a whole bunch of honey and sugar in it. I'm like, well, that sounds like it's going to be bad. Why would I want to put honey and sugar on my meat? I'm not an idiot. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> as opposed to all of Imperial China, who clearly had nothing on me. I would say they clearly have it wrong. <laughs> 
As opposed to pretty much every country in the world that at least has some kind of sweet thing that's not like a cupcake. Okay. Welcome back to Jackson hates sugar. I just think it's bad. You do be hating sugar. I just and think it ruins things. I don't know. I I partially get it, but like I don't I don't agree. I don't know. I, I I'm not afraid of sugar. I've definitely have been trying to like avoid it more of late, but like I'm I don't know, I'm not afraid of it. The only thing worse is sugar substitutes. Uh, I'll give you that. Sugar substitutes are not good. No, I mean, it's definitely exaggerated, but I don't know why I don't like kimchi, because I feel like I should. And the only thing in it that I don't really like is, like, the addition of sugar. But everything else in it, I'm like, this sounds like something I would enjoy. Then I eat it, and I'm like, hmm. Mid at best. Yeah. Well, that's a shame that you and feel I've that I've, I've, ch- I've tried tons of different kimchis, different styles. Uh, you know, traditional, more modern. I've had it in all sorts of dishes, added into things. I just don't, I don't like it. Wild. I know. Kimchi fried rice, kimchi steamed buns, kimchi by itself, kimchi and noodles, kimchi, uh, just all all over the place. Radish kimchi. I just, it's. I do love radish kimchi. I, don't I, get I it. love I don't... all kimchi. Honestly, it's just I think kimchi is one of the perfect foods of the world. Anytime I eat it, I'm like, man, I just wish this was cabbage. Huh. I don't know why. I, I, it's like, hey, it's like cabbage, garlic, and like chili oil. I'm like, those are three things that I like on everything. But then you put them together and I'm like, mm. see, the good thing is I don't see that happening with this uh, with this Italian hot dip. Um, it's true because you are, by the way, supposed to serve it hot. I figured that probably makes sense because serving that cold just does not sound good at all. Um, or maybe it, maybe it does to you. I don't know, but it does not. Well, to how me. do you how do you make it? How do you how do you do the anchovies? Are, are they like food processed or are they just like? No, like, you, uh, you take the you take whole? the sides and you put them into the dish, uh, the the hot oil, and then mm-hmm. you just cook the whole thing down together over the course of a few hours. Okay. A lot of uh, a lot of people will take uh, the garlic and they'll pre cook it, I guess, in like in milk to try and cut some of the extra heat. Which personally, I don't I don't get. I think that's a little weird. But more power to Wait, you, I suppose. Extra heat. Yeah, heat from the garlic to cut some of the edge off of it, you know. Do people think garlic is spicy? Some garlic is spicy. Not like as a general statement, but like raw garlic has a bite, you know. I mean, there's a little like there's a garlicky like bite to it. But I, I mean, I guess in some books, that's probably like a spicy thing. But I've just never I've never uh, connected this, the two. Oh, a lot of people do feel that way. Huh. Yeah, yeah it makes sense. I always thought it was kind of like garlicky. But that's a little bit too vague for, you know, doesn't give it much more of a profile. One of those uh, describe what this word is by using it in a sentence and then you use the word exactly. in a sentence. Yeah, exactly. I love garlic, though. Garlic is just good. Dan, what's your feelings it's on garlic? like the best. Garlic fucks. That's just a fact. Yeah. Uh, if you don't like garlic, I probably don't trust you. That's yeah, like you can't put too much garlic. Really in strong sure. statement to make. But I also I don't fully disagree. Yeah, I, I think that if you yeah, like I. If you're adding extra garlic, never harm something. True. Yeah, if your take is that you truly just don't like garlic in any form, I I don't know if we can be cool. You know, it's just too baseline of a flavor. Yeah. To like completely rule out. Exactly. Yeah. I because like you can put garlic in so many different things, you can prepare it different ways. You know, if you think it's spicy, you can cook it in milk. Yeah, it's it's just a quick cook in milk. It's not like a long cook in milk. But I guess it takes some of the edge off. I think what you actually then would like want to do, right, would be to like, I mean, it sounds grody, but I feel like you could just put some baking soda in it. Like just a little pinch of it, add a little bit of base. Just put less garlic in. I mean, for the for your olive oil, garlic anchovy dip, I I would argue that that might not be not impossible, but it wouldn't be like practical for your three ingredient dip to just be like, well, add less of one of the main ingredients. Well, if you're making a three ingredient dip and you're like, ah, but garlic's too spicy for me, then don't make the three ingredient dip that has garlic as one of the three ingredients. I will. I will agree with that. Uh, but I'm Boil also it in milk. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't I don't like it. I don't like the idea. Seems like a waste of milk. I'm just saying I get it. I don't know I that don't I can even I get, get it. it. Yeah. Don't put the garlic in your don't waste milk by and garlic flavor. Just put like a little less in or. Eat it and be like, this is a little spicy for my taste, and then take a sip of milk. How many Scovilles does garlic have? Literally zero, right? There's no capsaicin in a garlic, it right? Does, I don't... 
I don't know about that. I feel like it's is it is it like it's like a horseradish type thing, right? Like like horseradish doesn't, isn't spicy either, but it does have kind of a bite, right? Yeah, but horseradish is like that. You know, it's like that uh, wasabi kind of spicy. It's I feel like it's more of like a. I don't, I don't Am know. Am I, I wrong? Think garlic's I, think, there. I feel like garlic is in the same family of that, like as opposed to as opposed to something like a spicy pepper. Just Google is garlic spicy. Damn. Google's gonna judge you. Yeah, it is, and so is ranch dressing. You nerd. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I have no idea. The nutritional value of garlic is much higher than other spicy foods. What do you What do you mean? Uh, you, you, yeah, garlic is better for you than any spicy food. I find that hard to believe. That's, that's a weird sentence. Like, although also there's like a good portion of people who believe that things are bad for you because they're, if they're spicy. I'm. Yeah, that's weird. I don't. That's I don't a bad get take that. as well. Yeah, um, I know more people that think spice is inherently good for you. I think, which is also. I feel kind of incorrect, right? I have had a couple people tell me they're like, oh, yeah, but it's like really spicy, so it's probably not good for you. Um, but like it just that's that's not how it works. It just kind of is spicy. Like no one's gonna be like a jalapeno pepper is not good for you. It's got other nutrients in there. It just happens to have some like Scoville's. It's got a little capsaicin in the in the seeds. Yeah. I wonder what foods you interact with to think that to just assume that spicy foods are always unhealthy. Well, I, I will say, I think a lot of spicy foods are not very good for you. I mean, like a Nashville hot chicken sandwich, oh, that's no. not really good for you. for you. And Delicious, a lot of a lot of spicy foods I can you. think of are like fried. See, that's kind like of what really I was thinking, too. Carby, like like really spicy noodles and stuff like that. We are like, well, maybe this isn't necessarily like the best for you. You know, like instant ramen, like, like the spicy kind, you know, I do love spicy instant ramen, though. Have you ever had the bulldog noodles? Is that the uh, the one with the screaming the chicken? Young? Yeah, I have some of that in, my, in, my, uh, in the other room right now. Michelle's eating them in the other room no, right I now. I have some of that in the other room right now. Oh, I thought I thought you said Michelle's eating those right now. I was like, what are the odds? Like literally right now. Yeah. <laughs> no, those are good. Those are good. Um, but the best one, if you ever if you ever get the Samyang noodles, you got to get the carbonara ones. Mm. They're in like the pink package and they got like a little cheese packet in there. They're so good. We have um, we have some cheese ones, too. It's a cheesy curry one. Yeah, they have like the, the cheesy ones are pretty fire. They really are. Um, the kimchi ones, I'm not gonna lie, are really bad, and that's not coming from me because I didn't. I I tried a little bit and I was like, yeah, this sucks. Um, that's that's from Mari, who is a, a kimchi aficionado. The kimchi enjoyer says no, huh? The kimchi enjoyer logged on just to say that the bulldog uh, samyang kimchi ramen is bad. Interesting. I mean, I trust her, but I st now I still want, I want to try it even more. I'm I mean, just I, ha sure I have a, I have like don't I have like three much. or four of them. Well, shoot. So I, I can, next time I see you, I'll bring you a, a kimchi spicy ramen. It's there. Yeah, they have like a weird packet of like freeze dried kimchi inside of like that comes with them. Interesting. And I think I think it was like a very suspicious tasting. Oh, now I mean, it's, fr I, I it's freeze dried. It. It's freeze dried fermented food. So it's like I don't why. Why would you do that? <laughs> no, I, I like agree you, that. <laughs> apparently, it's got like a weird taste to it just because like, I don't know. So some some part of the process loses all the flavor except for the fermenty flavor. That's a bad flavor to have be the main thing that stays. It's <laughs> yeah, it's bad to have it like only taste like fermentation because that's not the worst part of kimchi, but it is not the best part of kimchi. Yeah, I do. I do want to work on liking. I want to make myself like kimchi. I've just been trying for months now, and it's just not happening. I'm sorry to hear that. I don't, I don't know how to tell you. I know, you it's like, like, I don't, it. I don't, good. I know, I, I don't want to have, I don't want to dis, I don't want to be the kimchi hater, but like, I can't become the kimchi appreciator. <laughs> it just, it, it just won't work. You know, I, I, that's true. I do think of Jackson, and I think, damn, Jackson, kimchi hater. I know, it's just like, it's I mean, in my blood. I can't, I can't like kimchi. I'm not going to be able to get past this. I might not be able to podcast anymore. Yeah, I just don't. I, I don't. I don't know. You know, it's like part of me is broken. Well, I could tell Michelle of who I want to be. Can't sleep anymore. Just thinking about kimchi. Day in. And day how out. I want to like it. Just kimchi time. Yeah. I just want to like it, you know, <laughs> if only you could. But you can't because, you know, I know. But there's no reason I can't. I just like and every time I try it, I'm like, I, like anymore. I try it and I'm like, eh. Like, it doesn't, like, disgust me or anything. I'm not, like, grossed out by it, but I'm just, like... You're just eh, unhappy. I don't really like it. Yeah, I just try it. I'm like, nah, I don't really want to eat this. What a shame. 
What a shame. I know. It's like if, if you if you would put it in front of me, we're like, hey man, you got to eat this. I would. It's not like it's it's not gonna it doesn't make me gag and it doesn't like repulse me. But I just don't enjoy it. I'm just like, eh. And I feel like half the time, if you like are getting like kimchi with things, it's either as like a side or as a topping. And I'd rather pick almost any other side or topping over kimchi because mm-hmm. I know that I don't hate it, but I also don't like it. And every time I get it, I'm like, eh. I should have got something else. I, was say, something like. should've, should've, I don't. Yeah. I neither hate nor love it, but it's not because of any specific reason as well. Like I, I will eat it happily. It's just, it has to be, I don't know. It, it, I don't like all of it. That's for sure. Like I, like every time Noah's come up here, he's gone and gotten uh, a big ass a thing big of kimchi. Old tub of it. A yeah, big old tub dude. of it. Why do you get kimchi every time you visit Dan? Uh, because I don't have an H Martin. He does. Yeah. Oh, Dan has an H. I didn't know Dan had an H. I do. Mm-hmm. I have a Dan is the H Mart appreciator. What do you? What would you even That's call that? That's pretty insane. What H Mart? I would love to go to a H Mart. What would you? What would you? Because the H Mart that I have isn't like a. It's not just. It's. It is an H Mart, but it is like an advanced H Mart. What the fuck do you even call it? An H Mart Super Center. It's just an H Mart in a shopping mall. Well, but the whole <laughs> mall is all. Um. Uh, so it's an Asian strip mall uh, with an H Mart. Yeah. Mart. yeah. I don't think there's Listen, anything special there, out, like name wise. That I think sounds pretty sick, though. It is pretty oh, sick. It is. Well. I mean, I, I've there was never that seen Asian market in Erie on State Street. I, I've never seen an Asian strip mall, so to me, it's very unique. Yo. There is one in Columbus that Mari and I have gone to. Uh, we actually went on our anniversary because they had this really cool, like modern Japanese place. Ooh. Oh, nice. Um, and like modern Japanese, not in a way where it's like American modern Japanese, which is you know like the like you know uh, ramen and sushi and. Like that kind of stuff, which which is authentic to a degree, but it's like but modern it, Japanese, where mm-hmm. it's like that, like almost cafeteria style, like you get a ticket kind of deal, mm-hmm. and like 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 the modern curry and like the the the, the cutlets. It sounds that's extremely fun. tasty, uh, and which was really cool because that's not the kind of typical like Japanese food you get most places because it's more of like the hey get the the ramen and stuff, but it was like the. It was really good. It was really fun. That sounds amazing. Honestly, I'm very jealous. It does. Mm. And it's super cheap. It was all like less than ten, like less than ten bucks a person, and we got a ton of food. That is fantastic. Yeah, it was really. It's in Columbus. It's really cool. I'm gonna have um, to make a trip down to Columbus. I got. Yeah, it's called Tensuke Express. Visit. Yeah, it's a good time. Um. Oh yeah. Did you hear about? Do you know what happened to the the Asian market that was on State Street in Erie? No. Yeah, I saw they closed down, and it bummed me out a lot. Yeah. So it was one of those things. Like Mari and I usually went there whenever we went downtown, just because like. They had a good amount of stuff um, and some stuff you couldn't really get anywhere else. Um, like they had pretty good like frozen scallion pancakes that were pretty cheap and stuff. And, you know, um, different things like that that were available for a pretty low cost. And they had a sign that was like always like, hey, we're moving to Buffalo Road. We're going to have a new location. And they had that sign up there for like six months. And then one day we went there and they were closed. And we we're like, oh, they must have moved to that new location they've been talking about. Yeah. Did so we not? look it up and no, we look it up and it's like permanently closed. And we're like, oh, I hope, oh, that's sad. Like, hopefully they didn't go out of business. You know, it was like really cool. The people who worked there were nice. Because um, like uh, Mario, like, you know, they, they spoke prominently chat in Chinese. And like, so they, they were always like, you know, excited to, to be able to speak in Chinese. Anyway. Um, yeah. Yeah. The, the, they got shut down for embez- like uh, for, for stealing $300,000 of fraud. Holy Just shit. Just a massive, Amazing. massive amount of wire fraud. Yeah. No, like. What it, a like, shame. Yeah, oh, just like a huge out. amount of wire fraud. That's so much money. Yeah, it was over three hundred thousand dollars. Then it's a, yeah, because yeah, we we looked it up. We're like, oh, I wonder if it, they moved to Buffalo Road or what happened. And maybe there's an article about it. And it was like, uh, yeah, this local market shut down for fraud. And we were like, fraud? Like, what were they doing? Like, jacking up prices artificially, or like buying stuff from Zams Club and reselling it illegally? And now it's uh, it's stealing money and uh, flipping, fl- uh, mostly flipping food stamps. Oh wow! Yeah, to mm. a very to a pretty pretty uh, uh pretty price tag. Hmm. So yeah, that is simultaneously now very funny and very that. sad. <laughs> it, yeah, yeah, I mean it's it's sad, but like we, especially because we we're like, oh, they probably moved to that new location they've been talking about. <laughs> you know, the, the and then we found out they weren't like, there. Do you think their plan was to move to the new location as like that was their that was their safe house equivalent, right? I don't like, know. Like they were like, if we move to a new location, they can't track us. Obviously. And it was on Buffalo Road, so we were like, oh, it's kind of far from, like, where we, we were at. Um, and then we, like, looked it up, because we were going to go anyway, and it was permanently closed. We're like, oh, that's sad, you know, hopefully they didn't go out of business, hopefully it was voluntary. Um, yeah, it was the cop. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's beautiful, Yeah, because be I'm not going to lie to you, the first thing I thought was, like, with all the, uh, the you know, the local uh, sentiments, shall we say, 
The uh, I thought they got shut down because of like a racism issue, and I was really Yikes. afraid of that. Yeah, that but no, really now sad. we got this instead, which is uh, wildly insane. <laughs> <laughs> but much more interesting, um, to be honest. Uh, yeah, speaking so. of wildly insane amounts of fraud and also China, uh, I've been playing a video game series recently. Oh, a yeah, detail. <laughs> uh, I I, I uh, purchased Yakuza Like a Dragon. Yeah, I was right. I didn't think that was going to be right. I've never played Yakuza before. Um, and but yeah, the, one of the one of the bad groups of people, like one of the not bad, but like one of the gangs, because you know everyone's a gang in Yakuza. Um, there's like the obviously the Yakuza. There's the the Korean mafia, and you also have to fight the the uh, Chinese mob as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a fun it's a fun game. I, I've heard good I, things. Yeah, I've I've never been opposed to it. I've always been like that seems cool, but I was always kind of like, eh, I don't really want to like that combat style isn't really my thing. Mm-hmm. And then they were like, hey, we made one that's like really heavy handedly based on Dragon Quest, and it's really like open about that. Oh, and nice. I was like turn-based jrpg yakuza game so you're just like i am in i'm but yeah sign me up and it's really fun i've sunk like 18 hours into it so far it's just like really insane but also sincere like there's just moments where it's like oh wow there's actual like graphic violence done in a way that like jars you and then like the next second they're like we have to find this homeless man's crayfish that we threw into the river nice. it's just it's just funny it's a it's a funny game. It's a fun game. I'm liking it. It's one of those games that I I probably uh, should play at some point. I've been told a million times that I should play it. I watched Dave play a bunch of it, which was very fun. Um, but I also don't wish to put that work in. Yeah, it's got a little bit of everything in like and it's all very well polished, surprisingly, for how much there is. Uh, but also I feel like Yakuza is one of those franchises where what happens is people will be like, oh, that looks really cool. I've always wanted to play one of those. And they'll be like, well, there's like eight of them. I'll just start from the beginning and play them all because they're going to be great. And then they start playing the first one and they quit halfway through because it's like a long ass JRPG. Mm -hmm. And then they don't play all seven of them. Yeah, it's so I was like, I'm just going to play this one that I want to play the most. And then I don't really care about the rest. And if I really want to play them later, maybe I will. That was that was my approach. Yeah, it's it's one of those things that it definitely feels like it's it would be a thing that once I started playing it, I don't know that I would like I would have to play through all of them almost. Not literally, obviously, because I'm not insane, but also a little bit literally. Yeah, and I think that the, this one's nice because it's turn based, so it's different combat style and it's not like directly related. Yeah, in a way that you need to have any background information. Super different style, which is really interesting. Yeah, which is nice because it's definitely a style I prefer in terms of like gameplay yeah it's like it's you know it's got a very similar idea to some of those other um modern jrpgs honestly a lot like you know like the persona games Mm -hmm. specifically like five where you're in tokyo um proper like in the city doing stuff but like with more depth and instead of playing as a bunch of high schoolers and like anime girls you play as like a couple of dads (laughs) and well and there's also like you know there are also attractive women characters um shocking but but of course but they're also older they're not like 12 they're not like 17 they're like adult fully grown people that's i don't yeah you play you play as like a a squad of dads for the first little while and it's very funny because you just play as like and they're not like normal like older men who've had like any kind of success they're so they're just pathetic it's just like (laughs) really pathetic (laughs) (laughs) yeah it's fun though. I've I've had fun so far. That's very good to be honest. I love that. I love that a lot. Yeah, you just play as like li- literally like one of the first like chapters is, and, but it's also like there's a lot of class consciousness to it as well. Yeah. In which like you basically you deal a lot in businesses and in dealings like prostitution. There's a lot of issues about like homelessness that are addressed and like the way that people get into the situations Mm -hmm. and also a lack of demonizing the people in those situations. Like you literally are homeless for a a good little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, And you know, your character deals heavily with like prostitutes, but in a way that doesn't dehumanize or delegitimize their struggles and who they are. Mm -hmm. I think that's a pretty, pretty wholesome. I like it. Nice. And you're also like 40 and talking about how much you like Dragon Quest. That's a gift. To be honest. <laughs> 
And it's just really funny because there's like several times throughout the game where like your character's like blah, blah, blah. And then someone else is like, yes, just like an RPG, huh? Have you ever played Dragon Quest before? Stares at the camera. And (laughs) it's a really good game. You should play it. (laughs) They literally say that like four times. I love that. I also love that, to be honest. Try it out. It's a great game. I love I meta things that like handle being meta well because so many things don't right um mm-hmm. i'm gonna use this as an opportunity to talk about scream for like three seconds oh, yeah, scream please. has been out go for it for th- as of this episode coming out scream has been out for a week i am not spoiling it um because that's super fucking shitty wait who was the real scream the, what real, if the real scream, scream was the was friends we made along the way at, it, <laughs> fuck you it was literally it is that's that's the point <laughs> so you knew so that right no no of course no? i didn't know that why would i know oh. that what are you talking about uh, because it's one of the, the it's one of the classic like it's the plot twist of the original movie is that like the murderer is like the friends we made along the way friend. <laughs> my god Z. and there's there's a whole thing about it Spo- and everything. It's, it's spoilers good. for the original scream movie <laughs> yeah the 25 year old movie spoilers yeah spoilers for the original one there's actually two screams mm-hmm. Actually, I think there's two killers in all of them except for the third one. I feel like I feel like one, two and four all have two. I've actually never seen the, Who's original? the second killer in the second one. Hmm? Who's the second killer in the second one? Um, I don't know. Come to think of it. Anyway, yeah, isn't it like what, what is it? His mom or something? Is there one of them where it's his mom? What's going? Is it like, so, like, like a relative? Is. Yeah. I, I saw the screen movies when I was in high school. Like I know nothing about them at this point in my life. That's that's fair. Uh, the new one came out though. Um, saw it um, on opening night or no, not opening night, just close to opening night. And I tell you, it's really good. <laughs> it's it manages to hold up the uh, meta style of the franchise uh, really well still without being like bad. I feel like I don't know because that's like some people like have made the jokes in the past that like. It's really funny that the movies just kind of got worse as they went on, just kind of like an overplayed franchise, which, yeah, I get it. But also it's like, well, you could also give us a nice movie, you know, but I really I really think that this managed to balance the uh, the being a meta slasher and just being a movie that doesn't suck ass uh, Mm -hmm. really well. All the characters are super likable. Um, You like you watch it and you care about what happens to them rather than like being like, cool. I'm glad that they finally died because I literally can't stand this person anymore. (laughs) (laughs) Which, you know, although those are also good horror movies. uh, There is a gift of that, to be honest. But that is like those are good horror movies, but that's definitely like a later slasher, like later 80s, 90s kind of like slasher trend where it was like the it almost, you know, flipped around to being like the slasher villain of sorts was like the hero because the people sucked so much. But only to the viewer, not on like a moral or ethical ground, but like as a viewer. Mm-hmm. No, I, yeah. I agree. And that like, you know, it's just kind of it's kind of sucks. Right. Like what's the Jason goes to space movie? Isn't that the one where like ev- like yeah, everyone's X. just super insufferable? Yeah, it's it's the one directed by Joss Whedon. Shocking. A Joss Whedon movie insufferable. That doesn't sound right at all. I hate what that man has done to pop culture. Is um, Joss real? Is that like a real name or yeah, is it like yeah, a pretty sure Joshua? Joshua. Yeah, it's Joshua Whedon. Oh, look. Is his name? No, it isn't. His real name is Joseph. Yeah, I figured. Oh, I hate that. But somebody who makes movies that insufferable could never go by Joe. No, I don't have any problem with... Uh, you know what? For all the things I don't love for uh, Joss Whedon for, I don't judge him for picking for like giving himself a different name. Uh, that is like extremely fucking common thing in Hollywood. Like, ridiculously common. Yeah, I'm not gonna. Oh, I thought I'm it was a nickname, Joss Whedon. That... I I thought it was a nickname. No, he, a lot of the time in these situations, they will like start going by the name professionally. Like I go by Mer- I go by Merlin Miller half the time professionally anyway. Like I don't go by Daniel. Because uh, sometimes uh, Josephs will pick a weird. Like you ever know a Joseph that goes by Seth or Sep? Um, no. I'm, the, I'm known two, and they both thought they were so clever. I feel like I feel I like jo- I feel like Joss did some okay things. Right, like he did write Toy Story. I don't, 
I don't actually know who he Joss wrote Whedon Toy is. Story. He wrote the original 1995 Toy Story, and also obviously Buffy, which I think is pretty much universally regarded as good. Um, I don't know anything about Buffy either. Is pretty of those. well regarded, but all of the cast have said that he was actually a terrible oh, person to work he's, with. He's I've heard nothing, but he's the fucking worst. I don't hate what he did for all in for a lot of his like movies necessarily although i, I don't I love him i don't do. love him for avengers and like what he set as like a standard for superhero films um buffy is sarah michelle geller right that sounds right i never watched it i just know it as a universally I loved either. thing um i don't love him for what he did for superhero movies and like i like kind of what no said like i don't love him for what he did for like pop culture in general but i don't dislike a lot of I'm movies, looking this guy up, but I do I'm, hate. I'm gonna figure this. I have heard nothing, but he's the fucking worst. Yeah, you definitely know his movies, Jackson. And how do you spell his name? J O S S W H E. I'm just know, looking at Joss. He'll show up. He'll show up. Um, he got bullied off of Twitter. Good. Fuck him. Ages ago. Wait, he did Cabin. In, he did Cabin in the Woods, though. He did mm-hmm. do Cabin in the Woods, which is good, and he did Toy like Story, Cabin which is in the good. Woods. And I'd even argue uh, Firefly is good, but don't at me. No, I have one, never seen... no one says Firefly isn't good. Shut up, Dan. Listen, I expected Jackson to have a bad take on Firefly. I don't think that's unreasonable. I don't know what the hell Firefly is. Uh, he did talking about. He did Doctor Horrible, which is great. Um, I don't know what that is either. I don't know any of this guy's stuff. I will he say can't be that cool. In in as I get older, as much as I enjoy uh, Doctor Horrible for the pro Doctor Horrible sing along blog for the product, I don't love it for like the reason it exists. <laughs> Yeah, wasn't it a writer's it, strike creation? It was a writer's strike, and Whedon was like, fuck it, we'll do it ourselves. Which, on some level, I respect, and uh, on another level, go fuck yourself. Yeah, How we got that? one of the wait, worst for, James Bonds because of that. Wait, for doing what? Which uh, wait. Trying to operate during the writer's strike. Mm. I don't remember he which did, one it was, but it was one of the, um, it was one of the ones that did. Daniel Craig was in, and he and the director were actively writing it as they went. Yikes. He was on Atlantis. Although from what I I mean, no spoilers, I, from what I hear, that was also kind of the situation with the new Spider-Man movie is they didn't have all the everyone locked in for it, uh, like anyone locked in for it. And they just kind of had a massive backup plan and had to do massive reshoots halfway through because they finally got everyone involved. I don't think I know Joss Whedon did the Justice League. Yeah, no, he did the I'm- Justice League cut that everyone hated. Yeah, I'm going to be honest. Everyone's talking about this guy, but like none of his movies I even know or have seen except for Cabin in the Woods. And that one was uh, good, but not on like a level where it needs to be like. Did he direct you know. Cabin in the Woods? Yeah, no, he was. A, he was a writer. OK, yeah, he, he, oh, he, co- that's, he that's, co-wrote that's, it. Okay. Yeah. Um, See, it's when he directs, he just like gets his hands all over it and wrecks things as a writer. He's generally OK, especially when you have someone that cuts his jokes out. Yeah, well, that's the thing is that he's very much a he he believes he's, firmly in the in the pay, in the up down kind of pacing that I think is is kind of what your your anger is, which is he this, directed two episodes of The Office, which is this yeah, this idea sense. of like drama being intercut with a bit and then back to drama and then back to a bit like constantly. It's what it has ruined a lot of people's like concept of how films should run. So I am very angry about it because it's I, one very, of the things that. that makes people be like, um, these serious movies are no good because there was no comedy in it. Like well, some of those things are like jokes that people make. And some of them are the actual opinions. There, were, yeah. le- there are legitimate like a Screen Rant article that I read the other day talking about how Hannibal is bad and it's not bad for any of the reasons that you might think it's bad. It's bad because there was no comedy. Which is also Wait, false. He's, he wrote Alien Resurrection. Why are we even having this conversation? <laughs> they, they didn't put him down for that? <laughs> are you kidding me? Uh, I mean... Oh my god. He wrote the movie where the guy makes out with the aliens and then they make a human-alien hybrid baby, not with the guy who made out with the aliens. It's with Jackson, the I can't DNA. believe that and you're against kissing an alien. And then I think it sucked by butthole out of a window. What? I can't believe that you're the one against kissing an alien. Um... I am when it's a xenomorph and it's in Alien 4. Fair enough. Sometimes it's okay. Sometimes it's okay. <laughs> like, I mean, it's all about like the kind of alien. Mm-hmm. And if it's like, I, I think sentience is definitely the biggest part of that. Are the aliens an alien not sentient? Nah, they're not like really. cats. Yeah. Really? 
Yeah. Yeah, it's like the whole, yeah, ah. they're, they're like, they don't, they're not thinking, like, As, necessarily, they are, they are instinctual. It's a lot more explored in, like, AVP, which I Yeah, they're designed really to recommend. be, like, instinctive, <laughs> um, like, you know, they're like the perfect killing machine type thing, so mm-hmm. they're not, like, they're not capable of, like, thought in the level of, like, introspection or any kind of, like, self-awareness, they just uh have like amazing natural predatory instincts yeah. huh. you know what i uh gonna be honest with you i as somebody who didn't watch any of the extra uh alien movies because i've only ever seen the original uh did not know that no i am I a, always assumed I am they a were huge very alien fan very conscious have we have we talked about my being a huge alien I don't fan think before? We have, Probably, right? Actually. We definitely have. Because you talked about I um, love watching it. it when you were far too young because you came downstairs yeah. and it was on TV. It was, it was my first movie that I have any memory of watching was Aliens. Hmm. Um yeah, Aliens is really good. Mm-hmm. But Aliens is probably a top ten movie all time for me. And Alien is a top five movie all time for me. I don't think that's unreasonable at all. So it's like uh but I, I can see that being flip flopped. For someone who is uh, a little more uh, guns heavy mm. and not a little more flamethrower heavy, um, the flamethrower is what really but, makes it though. Sure, I don't. I just I just love Alien. Like I, I think the the franchise is super cool, and uh, the fact that they're just like space cats is funny to me. That is mm-hmm. extremely funny to me. I wish they were like a little bit cuter sometimes. A little they, bit. They cuter. are very. Not and then Joss cute. Whedon came around and was like, "I'll make him cuter. Not like that, buddy. Not like that." <laughs> Don't give it alien boobies. Just like make it roll around on its back like a cat does or something. I didn't watch Prometheus. You didn't? The whole thing. Yeah, I watched the whole thing. Oh, you did. I yeah, thought you I said leave. I didn't watch Prometheus, and I'm like, that's a, a weird statement to open up with. But uh, why didn't you? Uh, I watched it. I I watched the whole movie. I'm very sorry for you. And Alien Covenant. I actually don't remember anything about Alien Covenant except for there was a scene in it that was like actually slapstick humor but i don't think i'm it's not there was like a scene where like this woman literally was like trying to get away from like the weakest possible muted down possible smallest babyest form of the alien right like the time where you could punch it to death yeah Mm -hmm. squish and she tries to run away for like 40 minutes sets off like an insane chemical reaction with like all sorts of stuff locks herself into a room with it locks herself out of a room with it runs around for a while falls and hits her head gets up runs around screams knocks over and then blows up an entire ship at the end and it's like a five minute three stooges bit of this woman running away from something that weighs like a pound and it's just like really weird and bad and that and the the i remember that from that movie and that there's a scene where um two different michael fassbenders are sitting on a room together and one of them very suggestively shows the other one how to play a flute yeah 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 that's classic um michael fassbender not really but it's definitely classic what's, at that character what's michael fassbender yeah, what's michael yeah. fassbender <laughs> yeah i've been thinking about that like what i'm worried doing? about him what's he been up to he was in the assassin's creed movie remember that i that's heard that was only bad and not atrocious I I know nothing about it. I just know it existed. Let's see, Michael Fassbender. I heard that. Oh, he has a calendar you can buy. I heard that movie was bad, but like very He's much. He's German. Watchable. Yes, he is. I thought he was English. Is a name like Fassbender? No, no, no. I'll give him that. The English right. have some some names. He he was a race car driver. That's rad. Wait, like real life or as an actor at some? Yes. Point? He's now a race car driver. In 2020, he started becoming. He just became a race car driver. That's what he's up to these days. That's Holy amazing. Shit. And he's pretty Holy good. shit. That's awesome. I love that. I love that. Michael Fassbender, he was in a couple movies, and then he was in, he was in X-Men, and then he was just like, you know what? I've, I think I really liked him in X-Men. I'm going to become actually. a race car driver. You ever been in a franchise so bad that you decide to quit and become okay. a race well, car driver? Look, I'm not going to lie to you. Michael Fassbender may have been in four or five franchises so bad That's true. that he wanted to just do that because he was in the X-Men the the recent X Men franchise he was in uh, Prometheus and Alien Resur- or, uh, Covenant. Hey, there was there uh, what was, else was he there in? There was one good recent X Men movie. Was he in it? Yeah. Which one was it, Dan? Days of Future Past. I'll give you that. Days of Days Future, Future Past, Past is actually fun. really good. I don't know if he was in that one. He probably he definitely was. was. He was. That's I the fact that no. I you are one hundred percent about him. to be mad at me, huh? 
I'm just saying there's a lot of really <laughs> terrible X-Men movies. Uh, <laughs> and that is all of them, pretty much. It is most of them. Yeah, that is true. They are. Um, they really don't know how to do an X-Men, huh? No, he's going to be in really Kung Fury 2. Which one? He's going to be in what? Kung Fury 2. Wait, why do I know that name? Kung Fury, like that, like the comedy. Um... Oh, yeah, where they go punch dinosaurs. Yeah, where yeah. like Hitler shoots them through the he's phone. Fuck yeah. yeah, dude. That's so He's good. He's going to be in a full length version of Kung Fury 2 with David Hasselhoff and Arnold Schwarzenegger. That sounds so rad. And Michael Fassbender. That's uh, good... and he's also going to be in the yeah, next that's... Taika Waititi movie. It's... That makes sense. Who the fuck is... So David Sandberg is the one who's like the, the lead in that. Is he... That can't be like related, right? What do you mean? But so a car driver. He's a, he's a race car driver. Sorry, I'm looking at Kung Fury now because Kung Fury is the most ridiculous idea ever for me. I did not know they were making a full length movie. Um, but yeah, no, that Michael Fassbender is actually making moves. They had fucking Jorma Decone play fucking Hitler. That's so funny. That's so funny. I just think it's an, hilarious that Michael Fassbender is going to be in it, and he's also a race car driver. Dude, I... Like, I'm I just, have, I'm still thinking about that. I don't think that I, that I dislike Michael Fassbender's role in anything. Right? Uh, and, you know, I, yeah, don't I, know, I think it was weird when no you taught him stuff how to play the flute in a really horny way. I yeah, mean, that doesn't sound like a bad thing. It just sounds like it was no. in a bad movie. No, no he was one was of the weird. better characters in that movie, if I'm going to be honest. Uh, mm -hmm. He was actually two of the better characters in that movie, if I'm going to be honest. <laughs> Maybe actually three, because I think he was also young Wayland. I believe he was. Because yeah, I believe he, that the... Um, he was Android three characters. Based off him. Yeah, yeah, no, I just, I don't know if he was in the movie or not. Like, I don't know if there was like a... I think there was, though. But either way, he may have been three of the better characters in that movie. Good for him. And it's not like an Eddie Murphy comedy. So it's yeah. impressive that one person could be more than one of the characters. That's actually decent. Can't believe you're saying that Edward Murphy doesn't deserve uh, the honor of being the only person that uh, can do that. I, I can. Fair enough. <laughs> Uh yeah, I mean, I'm not gonna fight on this. I, it was just an off every now and again. No, no, just like he starts to like have a bit and then just backs off instantly, and it's a gift it's not, every time. It's, it's not you attack actually him for the trying bit. to commit to a bit that I don't care about. Um, especially when I never even finished talking about Scream. Yeah, go finish talking about Scream. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, we, we, we got caught up on a couple way. other things. Um, it's it's just very worth watching. I think that Studio Radio Silence managed to live up to like the Wes Craven movies in a way that I was not anticipating. And it makes me really, really happy. Nice. You know, um, the kills are fun. The characters are fun. The killer is fun to guess. It's, it's a really classic feeling scream movie that will make you very happy. If you like the franchise, in my opinion, that's all I've got to say. Woo. Anyway, I'm drinking absinthe tonight. How's everyone doing? Oh man. Yeah. Wasn't this supposed to be a drunk episode? You guys are uh, lacking. I mean, Dude, I wasn't going to make it a drunk episode because I was like halfway through a mug of chai and I realized at that point that I'm like, I don't want to ruin my chai experience, but I am drinking some absinthe. Put some absinthe in the chai. That actually wouldn't be a absinthe bad combo. And Turn, that in Turn that poop into wine. Turn that poop into wine. I don't got the I don't got you on that one. Sorry, fam. Scientology Man. is like dying. And that's Thank funny. God. That's so I'm good. glad. I'm like, you it's know like, I'm gonna, I'm, I know it might be a controversial take. I'm just gonna say it. I'm glad Scientology is dying. Uh, I, I think John Travolta is gonna be leaving pretty soon. I feel like people are like leaving it like quickly. In, in addition to the like the people, they're just not recruiting more people. Yeah, they're not recruiting. Like, there's like so many people, who, like, there's so much like, truth coming out of it. There's not that many kids being born into it. And like most of their big figures, like their big names, are kind of leaving. And like, it's just like John Travolta and Tom Cruise these days. And I think John Travolta's like separate separating from the church because his wife who passed away last year was diagnosed with cancer. Um, and I don't know if you know this or not, but Scientologists don't believe in chemotherapy or cancer treatment. Yikes. Oh, so he ended up having. Um, so he said, uh, well, no, what happened is his wife got cancer and the church said, well, that's really sad, but we don't believe in treating it. And he said, nah, stupid. Cause like it took it took him like thirty five years to get something that would like break him out of the church, but like his wife dying was, I think something that was like one of the like straws that broke the camel's back, where it was like big enough that he was like I'm, I'm going to I'm gonna take my wife and like get her treated. More power. Unfortunately, to him. I'm it was, glad unfortunately did it didn't. You know she she is uh, no longer alive, but yeah, uh, very good that he like left the church to give her treatment. 
and not just mm. let her die. That is, in fact, good. But yeah, still technically involved in the church. We'll just see how how much. But yeah, I saw that recently. I was like, oh, that's good. Man, I yeah, feel Scientology. like Scientology is one of those things that I just like. How does someone get recruited into Scientology? Like, how does that work? Um, um well, they actually, you because you're rich, isn't that it? Kind I'm of, but sure. they also have yeah. recruitment centers. They get a lot of people who aren't rich. Also, they they get, they get you to buy a whole bunch of books and courses, and they just continually re-release those until you have to buy them again. It's pretty much just like a scheme. Kind of sounds like Amway. Uh, it's pretty similar, yeah, in a lot of ways. Everyone only who with, tried to recruit me to Amway just talked about how many books they read. So yeah, only they sell you on like Salvation, but you have to buy and read all the books. There's like required readings, and the idea is that if you're buying the books and reading them, you're spending all your time focusing on it. Scientology's thing is it just tries to eat up as much of your time as possible, and then make you commit as much of your time and money as you can. And then if you keep doing that for long enough, it becomes a bigger and bigger part of your life slowly. And then it balloons to taking over. Maybe they get you to sign up for their sea org, their sea organization. And you go off and like live on a ship. Ew. Yeah, it's crazy. Ew. Yeah. Oh, They're I mean, actually like that. batshit insane. Outside the context of you know Scientology, living on a ship doesn't sound like the worst thing. Yeah, but well, when I you're when like it's a when it's a ship that belongs to a cult, it's uh pretty bad. It's true. Because no, living, living on a ship, I wouldn't mind like a I wouldn't mind like a houseboat or like a if I lived on like a larger ship that port like docked fairly regularly. Mm -hmm. There's worse things for sure. But, yeah, houseboat uh, sounds fine to me. I, but when the sh uh, when the ship is run by a very cult, established, I'm terrified of the open ocean. Oh, that's right. I forget. I do forget that. I, I am too. But like, boats are pretty big and tough. Um, no, they really don't sink that much. No, asking for a friend. How much do we have to donate to get you to play Subnautica? Honestly, about a billion dollars at least for me. I I don't know. Because that plays into both my fear of the open ocean and my fear of the deep dark void. Uh -huh. So like that sure does. That game's a huge no for me. I've watched some people play it. It looks cool, but I also have been watching people play it like at the beginning of their playthrough, and I never scary. check out their end. Yeah, uh, you know Noah, when you're still as, in the surface water. As a fellow scared of deep ocean yeah, don't guy, do it. as a you friend, wanna, you want to you want to play Subnautica? I was going in a completely different direction. Oh man. I was I going for the that. solidarity direction of I'm also terrified it. of that game. Do you want to play it? Play, oh, you guys should play it together. That'd be cute. That's literally what I just said twice. Yeah, it, it oh, is what cute. he said twice. I'm sorry. <laughs> Except he didn't say it was cute. He was just saying like, hey, we're manly men because we're not cute. Uh, I'm just saying men. we got to. I just saying we got to band together on this. one. I could see it happening. Woo. I, I will say I, I have played it uh, actually quite a bit on stream now. I don't have the last of Obia. But I yeah, might by the time I'm done with that game. Reminding me what it's called. Mm -hmm. I'm Happy just though. I just also get like motion sick whenever I play any game that's first person. Interesting. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I get that. I was playing um oh what's it called? Mafia 2 recently. Firstly, the ending sucks fucking ass. Uh it's really unfortunate, but it's so oh. bad. What's the ending? The end you know, so the whole movie is or the movie, fucking hell. The whole game is just like a buildup of you realizing you kind of got in over your head in the whole mafia thing uh, because it turns out that a bunch of the people that like you care about um, and are helping also directly hurt people that you care about and your family. Like the guy who you get your first mob missions from is the guy that killed your dad. Um, no. the guy who you borrow money from is the guy who lent your dad money that got him a job at the wharf because he couldn't pay back the crippling debt you know stuff like that well that guy um, seems like he's doing nothing bad though. That, that, was, that seems like he was actually helping you well you could make arguments uh, well, you, said the like, guy, you said the guy got your dad a job what's so bad about that yeah at the, at the dock where he couldn't make enough money to pay back well shit was the guy supposed to give him a better job is I mean, like, he didn't get him a job. He had to get the job because he had to pay back this crippling debt. Wait, who did he get the job from then? I thought he got the job, job the from the guy at the wall. No, no. He, he had. Anyway, he. OK, so anyway, the mobster who killed him gave the... him a job because the guy he borrowed money from gave him a psychotically high interest rate, you know? Wait, so he gave him a job and then he killed him? Yeah, because he was becoming troublesome. Well, you could have just said he killed your dad. I thought you I said did. a different guy yeah. killed your dad. I thought you said the early mission guy killed your dad. That's the same guy. The same guy? You, the guy who gives you an early mission is a mob guy. Yeah, but then you said someone else was doing something different about the job. Jackson, I please. think that Jackson... I can't tell I Jackson's know bullying you my dad or job. he's very confused. It's literally, I feel like, a 50-50 shot. <laughs> anyway, um, you get to the end of the game, and you're given this deal where, like, since you, uh, at one point, you vouched for a rat who was working with the feds, 
you start a gang war with the Chinese and all <sighs> kinds of stuff. Um, you're given one out and it's going and you go kill your boss because he's become troublesome to the big wigs and you do it. And he has your friend there too. The guy who you've worked with the whole time, who's like your best friend. And you convince him to not work with the boss anymore and to work with you to take him down so that you can both go away together and live happily ever after. Yeah. And then at the end of the game, you get loaded in separate cars and they're like, all right, let's go to the strip club. And then you take separate paths and you're like, hey, where's Joe going? And it's like, Joe wasn't part of the deal, Vito. And that's how they kill him. Well, yeah, no, that's it. Like Joe gets killed and that's how the game ends. And that's it. Damn, that sounds great. I'm not going to lie. Where's the game take place at? Uh, New York. Okay. I thought it was in Italy for a minute. And I was like, why'd you start a war with the Chinese in Italy? No, no, it's it's a it's a New York mafia action. Mm. I heard I've heard like Mafia 3 is one of those like weirdly uh, what's the word divisive games. That's because I... it's so slur heavy. That oh, no. is a black guy. That's what it was. I mean, this game was really slur heavy, too. Like, oh, no. At one point, about a third of the way in, I'm like, all right, guys, this is going to sound really bad, but bear with me. I hope I never interact with another non-white person in this game exclusively because I don't want to hear them talked about because mm. it's that bad. That sucks. Mm-hmm. Um, I was under the impression I, I, I that I don't know was... anything about Mafia 2. But... Okay. Um, even in just playing Yakuza Like a Dragon, which came out last year, mm-hmm. I think the PS5 version came out like two months, like a, not not even a year ago. Um, are the physical depictions of the Chinese people problematic? Um, not because they kind of much. are in Yakuza a little bit, not in a way where oh. I'm like, this is blatant, but I'm kind of like, you don't have to like, uh, you know, there's a little yeah. of like a... Uh, so, like, there's one Chinese man model, and then there's a few different bosses, and they look like normal human beings, but the generic Chinese guy model, they because they have, like, five or six different white guys, they have five or six different black guys, and they have one Chinese guy, which is that part, that's not great. That's not um, great. I think that that would be what is called less than ideal. Uh, and their dialogue just, is also not that great. So yeah, I'm yeah, just curious, it's, it's less know, than ideal. Sometimes, yeah, there's there's definitely games um, that I don't know when Mafia Two came out. I don't know if it's an old game or not. Two thousand, but ten or eleven, I believe. Yeah, there's just definitely some games back in like the early in the two thousands that uh, specifically Chinese characters were not portrayed in a way that was anything other than like a turn of the century caricature mm-hmm. and it just like i just wasn't sure because i knew the game was a little bit older oh. yeah no it's it's not it's not ideal all right yeah um so all that but uh my main point there was uh the game it's driving i don't know if this is a their like remaster edition as the problem or if it's like a game that the reg- or issue the regular game had that i didn't remember but the driving is just absolutely nauseating it's so slippery feeling with the camera and when you're going around turns if you're going straight you're fine but as soon as you like turn the car i don't know what they do but holy shit it's so bad i don't know i i felt sick while i was playing it yeah i i can, I can see it i mean even good driving games will make me feel sick sometimes mm-hmm. i think it's motion blur i think motion blur helps a lot because like GTA, when you're driving fast enough, the world kind of blurs a little bit and your react or your like ability to slow down and turn is drastically reduced. So it kind of slows the world down with you until you you, know, you hit something and you abruptly stop. I, but it doesn't bug me as much. I've never um, played a GTA game. Really? Yeah. That actually does surprise me a little bit. Not going to lie. I guess I'm not that surprised that surprised, but like I'm a little surprised. You know, I was uh, definitely not allowed when I was a young kid, but also no not, even, not even a matter of not allowed. I mean, I, I don't know that many kids under the age of like 10 should, but you know, whatever. Everyone's no. to each their own. Uh, but also like I was pretty much exclusively like I had a Sega Genesis and then a GameCube. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's kind of like it was yeah. almost an afterthought to the not able. Yeah. Like I didn't I didn't have anything that like uh, 
that, that, that could play a, a GTA game or have any GTA games in general. Mm hmm. Yeah. But yeah, no, I've never I've never played one even like to this day. I, I know I probably like should grab like GTA five when it goes on sale for like 10 bucks. Um, I think it's fun. The story is really good. Yeah, I can't imagine the I online like is it. fun, but it's very overwhelming at this point. You will not be able to enjoy it because so much has happened. I don't know what that means. And that's just like adds an another layer of like obscurement between myself and Grand Theft Auto. I just like I don't like I don't know what you do. Like, do you drive in the game usually or like do you just there's a lot of driving. It's you're just it's just you go around and you do stuff. There's no skills really to upgrade. You just kind of go around and you drive and you shoot. In theory, there's skills that get upgraded, but it's not like amazing, you know? Like who like what, what who do you shoot? Like what do you do? Is it just you fighting cops or is there uh, like preferably not. There's other gangs and stuff. It's basically you against the world kind of situation. Oh, you, Detroit um, versus everybody. Yeah, for the story mode, you are um you're a confidential informant and you're trying to just like stay underground while also like making money because your marriage is falling apart and you need to keep throwing money at it to almost make it okay it's 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 an okay game and it's a really like fun compelling story i really enjoyed going through it again recently but um the online so many different upgrades have come out to the gta online servers but they don't put you with other people in like similar levels so you'll be as a level one you could be tossed into a uh, lobby with like a level 573 person who has a flying motorcycle well wait what's the problem being in the lobby it? yeah but like in the lobby like why why because like, the because lobby in gta is is not what you think it is lobby is the free roam oh yeah, yeah it's so the entire just, world map um yeah so you just so, like walk around well yeah but there's missions do to do and they'll come in and they'll interrupt your missions and because they're so high level you cannot get away from that so, like, let's say that you're in my biker gang and our job is to take meth from A to B. Yeah, after you do we've, that sometimes. After we've been active for, like, 30 seconds, a little timer will pop up saying, hey, everyone can see you now, and they can interrupt your, like, delivery. Why would they do that? Because, because they're they get a cash bonus. It's a oh. minor, it's a very minor cash bonus. It's not worth the time, but people uh, suck. Some people will log on for the express purpose of going around and messing with other people's runs because they think it's fun. Which Can you just do, like, yeah, a private lobby? It can be fun. You cannot make private lobbies. You can't do like a friends well, only. You, you technically can. can. If you do, you can't do any of the missions. Yeah. Does your uh, IP whitelist lobby, does that work with missions, Dan? Uh, yes. Yes, 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 yes. The, the so, one yeah, that there's... is definitely legitimate and isn't going to get me uh, in trouble. Yes. I was joking when I said that. But yeah, like, yeah. there's uh, such thing as like you can uh, whitelist IPs in online lobbies and only certain people can join that way. And then you could do like a friends only setup that's fully open. But that's a mod, and Rockstar hates mods, so luckily, none of us do that. Yeah, 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 because if I did that, I would get in trouble. But, like, are they listening to the podcast? Yeah. Uh, yeah, probably. Rockstar Corporate is actually one of our biggest listeners. Yeah, is oddly true? enough, oddly enough, weirdly, Rockstar Corporate, very into off the air. We should ask them if they can make it so people can't wear KKK uniforms in Red Dead Redemption. Yeah, that would be you know ideal, what? wouldn't it? That would be ideal. I think we should do that, actually. That would be a cool and good thing to do. I mean, there are the people that just open fire on anyone who's wearing like all white immediately. And you would think that would start to uh, discourage people from doing it. It no, doesn't. I mean, but, like, can you wear all gold? Can um, you just be a baller in, in Red Dead? Yeah. You what's Red, how, a lot of yellow. What's, what's a Red Dead Redemption do? Like, is it like a Grand Theft Auto? Like, do you just do yeah. the same stuff? Yeah, yeah pretty much. Uh, it's, how, pretty much how much horse like? is there? Like, how much horse do you play? have to do to go places? A lot. It's exclusively yeah. horse and unless you want to ride trains, which well, is yeah, but like how much horse and like to get from a place to another place. Um, It depends on how far you want to go. But the furthest ride I've had to do, like realistically, you're talking like three to five minutes. That's not bad. No, no. it's, I it's the really game was like I thought it was like the whole West. No, nah. I mean, it's a pretty big map. To, yeah, the but, post game but, has a huge map. I will say like, you don't have something. to do too much. If, if you're doing the online He's he's not wrong in three to minutes to get to wherever you need to be. However, if you want to travel across the map, that's going to take a hot spicy minute. But there is okay, quick yeah. travel. There is. Yeah, I mean, they travel, usually, yeah. yeah, usually they do kind of pace it out pretty well. Mm -hmm. I mean, they don't. You know, why would you put a quest across the entire map? Because uh, fuck, um, you'd that's be surprised. Why. I Some I like when games far. start doing that a little bit later on, though. Mm -hmm. 
Um, like Horizon Zero Dawn does that a little bit, and I had a lot of fun with that. That reminds me. I need to. I I forgot that Horizon Zero Dawn came out on PC, and I have uh, now. I have like such an itch to go get it. It's a really really good game. I love it, and I can't wait for the sequel. I think I had an issue. I think my problem with was that on PS4 there was just a little bit of like stutter, for lack of a better word. See, I actually like. I don't. I don't know. I I like the first PS4 I ever got was a PS4 Pro. So mm-hmm. like I I didn't like necessarily experience a lot of like the. Mm-hmm. And now I have a PS5. So like if I play any PS4 games on that, there's. Like I, I played no it, I didn't like I was playing like Cyberpunk on the PS5 and like it works just fine because most of the issues were like on the PS4 like default and mm-hmm. then a lot were still on the PS4 Pro and then like just the more processing power the more I can handle the bullshit that's not being optimized. Yeah. Um, well, but yeah, I, I, I liked it though. Horizon's good. If I'm not mistaken, uh, did, aren't they coming out with a new? Air quotes new, like a re release of, of Cyberpunk, like a game of, uh, not game of the year, because obviously they didn't get game of the year. They're but doing a PS5 version still. The, PS, the PS5 version, which is supposed to be basically the game as it was intended. The thing is, I've been. The, the, so I got Cyberpunk when it first came out. Mm-hmm. Um, and I played a little bit of it, but just never really got that into it. Um, and then, like, my main reason is they were like, hey, pretty soon we're releasing the PS5 version. And I was like, well, okay, I'll, I'll just wait for that. Um, it ke- it keeps getting pushed back, and so I haven't played the game even though I've owned it for like a year and been kind of wanting to play it, because like one scene kind of got me out of it, and then I was like, oh, I could go back. I want to try again, and then I'm just like, oh, I'll wait for the PS5 version, and I've been doing that for almost a year now, so <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's gonna come out eventually. I, I he they, they keep saying. <sighs> Maybe someday. I do like the I do like the free upgrades to like the the next gen version though. Mm-hmm. I think it's important. Mm-hmm. I think you should. That should always be a thing. Yeah, I think that's good. They are gonna stop doing it pretty soon. But like, I think, I think that this was a like that was a like a year and a half was a good amount of time to be doing it. Yeah, honestly. I think like, by this point, if you got a PS Five, you do. If you don't, like, well, if you don't have one at this point, you've been wanting one the whole time. You're probably not looking that hard, and that's okay. Yeah. But, like, you know, if you've, like, really been nose to the grindstone, you'd probably have found one by now. But if it's, like, a casual thing, then you probably aren't buying that many games also, you know? Mm-hmm. I think it's a good window of time. Uh, I... I was also, I was really frustrated that um, Ghost of Tsushima didn't do that. Oh, really? They re- yeah, no, and I was kind of hmm. pissed because, like, that was one of the, that was, like, the last game I bought when I sold a PS4. And I played, like, a good bit of it, and I got the PS5, and I played it on there. And it had, like, enhanced stuff, like, it had, like, higher, like... It had more consistent frame rate at 4K, which was pretty cool. Um, but that's like the only real change. And they were like, oh, but we're releasing a PS5 version. And they did, and it's 70 bucks, and I, you don't get it for free if you have the base game. Even if you yeah. bought the base game at 60. That's weird. Yeah, that's what, that's what I thought. I was like, uh, and they're like, well, we added some, there's some different changes, and DLC comes included with it. I don't know. It just seems like I'm not, I, I'm not buying it for $70 when I have the other version. <laughs> it's just kind of a lame. Do you think Ghost of Tsushima is going to come to PSA? I feel like it will. Uh, maybe. It's Didn't pretty we get good. Bloodborne I... recently? We did, and we also got um, Days Gone and Horizon Zero Dawn, and now God of War. So it really doesn't like. It's almost like I think I think Sony is finally like letting go of their grip on like their major exclusives, which it kind of seems like what they're doing is they're doing the almost like what Epic Games does, right? Where like things end up on Epic for a year and then they get re released to everywhere else. Yeah, they want mm-hmm. that first. They want that first buy. Which I don't. You know what? Honestly, fuck yeah. If it means that we get more exclusives on PC because I'm not about to go buy another console, I'm here for it. I I will say though, I've fallen in love with the PlayStation Remote Play. Like it's it's so much better than any Remote Play anyone else has. I don't know anything about the Remote Play actually. I so, you so, tell. You know how, have you ever done like Steam Remote Play or anything like that? Mm-hmm. And you know how it just like sucks ass. Uh, I mean, it has, it, it's okay for it some be. things if they're yeah. heavily story based. Inputs don't matter. Yeah, if you're trying to be like really reflexive, it doesn't work. But if you're doing something like I don't know, a uh, cooking like in one of the million like cooking games, that's fine. Aren't those like usually quick time event based? No, I'm thinking more like um. I mean, yeah, but we did Michelle and I did it for a while when we were doing um. Oh fuck me, I can't think of the name of the game. It doesn't fucking matter. Overcooked maybe. Yeah, when we were doing Overcooked, we yeah. did that all through remote play. That wasn't Yeah, bad. I think the remote play together, I, I was talking like the remote play, like you're streaming it to another device. Oh, I 
actually like, had, you had know, a really good experience with that. On a, on a, like, you know, like, Steam can like stream it to your TV and stuff. Yeah. Like that. If you had like that Steam box or whatever that they tried to give away for a while. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I just never had any luck with it. It was always like at least a little bit delayed or mm-hmm. just like struggled and chugged a little bit. Um, but the, the PlayStation one, I just find really nice um, because you plug your controller into whatever device it is that you're using. And then as a result, it like syncs up whatever like input is being done to your like monitor that you have the game being s- streamed to, not the the console. That's really nice, to be honest. So you're functionally just playing on whatever you, screen you have the remote play on. I'm like, well, I, I've really been very nice, impressed honestly. with that. I'm, it's, it's super cool. I, uh, I've run into the, I, I think I've, I don't know how much I've talked about it or not. Um, I, I really, I really want to play more games on my PS4, uh, but I can't cause I'm got it. I'm getting mad, uh, controller drift at this point. Oh, uh, yikes. At, and I just, I'm not about to go spend 60. I actually was talking to somebody today and I didn't realize that the reason that they're fucking expensive as shit is cause they're not making them anymore. They don't make PS4 controllers anymore or oh, aren't really? right now anyway. Interesting uh and as such it's kind of difficult to get your hands on one which um huh. I don't, how do i say I this? it sucks it sucks so yeah. bad yeah i didn't know that uh the dual sense though is so good i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna end up getting a ps5 like truth be told like there's no world in which i won't eventually get a ps5 yeah, they're, they're, it's it's really nice i use it way more than i thought i would i if only <laughs> the problem is i i really truly only want it for uh for uh spider-man like that's the only yeah like get it get it for a couple games and the ultra hd player yeah <laughs> like, i mean honestly yeah, yeah it's a good deal cool that's the, that's the biggest thing like if you get the disc version if you want to buy like a uhd player it's 200 bucks if yeah, you buy Jesus. a ps4 it's like 500 which yes that's more significantly more it's over but twice the price a lot more but, but it also, it also way had, more than twice as much stuff yeah it's also a playstation so like if you kind of wanted one anyway and you also kind of wanted a uh, ultra hd player just get the ps5 and then you can you know yeah yeah i All right, we should uh we should probably call it though because uh, it has yeah. been we are a good bit over time who should we call ghostbusters no one will know because uh most likely i'll end up editing like 10 minutes of dead air out of this thing or something and people will be like it was just an hour long like normal what are you talking about i don't about? know i feel like there's I, i'm not seeing a lot of dead air here yeah i think we I did like nothing the banter but machine work just kept rolling time. and we didn't really stop today good yeah, are we, you I don't know if it was good good too, but no, yeah, absolutely I mean, you, not. You mentioned Scream, and then we talked about Joss Whedon for like 20 minutes. Oh, Joss mm-hmm. Whedon. Oh, my gosh. Well, I'd yeah, rather not. Which is honestly 20 more minutes than he ever deserved in his life. Uh, he, he's probably like... Yeah, no, he's a piece of shit, right? Yeah, no, yeah. he's a shitbag. Yeah, he's fuck a huge him, man. He didn't deserve anything. I was going to say, he makes bad movies, but he might be nice. But then I was like, no, we, we talked about him not being nice and making bad movies. Sucks to be him. It does. Thanks for listening, everybody. See you next week. We're going to do a real ending today. Damn, that was quick and harsh.